finishing up my quiet time in my study. I am going through this study with a friend. It's my first study from the Daily Grace Co. If you guys haven't heard of them, they have a ton of really good resources. Um, but this is my first dedicated study that I'm doing of theirs. So far, I'm really enjoying it. 40 days with Jesus. Sometimes you guys, if I'm in like a really weird mental space, what I need most is just to study Jesus, is just to read the gospels, is just to fix my eyes solely on him. And when I've done that in the past, it has given me so much peace. I wanted to share one of the things that kind of stood out to me from today. It was going through when Jesus was tempted by Satan when he was, um, when Jesus was fasting and Satan's twisting scripture and Satan's trying to get God to worship him. And what's so crazy is that God uses scripture as a weapon against Satan. The same scripture that we have. He is quoting scripture to silence Satan, to shut him up, and it does. That's how powerful these words are. Yes, it's a book, but it's also a weapon. It's also a sword. If we're under attack from Satan, this is the only thing we need. If this is all Jesus needed, and he was God in the flesh, this is all we need. Isn't that crazy to think about? God could have done something outside of his word because he's all powerful and he could have used that to defeat Satan in those moments of temptation. But instead, he uses the Bible, he uses scripture. And I just think that's amazing. And, and that's such an encouragement and also just kind of a challenge to me to really hide God's word in my heart so that when I do feel tempted or I am struggling with something or I feel like I'm being attacked, that I can recall scripture to mind and it will literally deter Satan. It's so powerful. If you've been a Christian for a while, a lot of these things you hear, but sometimes you just really need to hear it. You know, your soul needs to like really soak it in. And I felt like I really soaked that in this morning. If I'm struggling with something, finding scripture that talks either directly to that, like I think for instance, on some of my previous vlogs, how I was saying that I was struggling with just feeling down or feeling depressed. It's like, if I'm feeling that way in those moments, then I need to run to scripture find scripture that addresses those things and use that, meditate on it, memorize it, speak it out loud over myself because that's what I need and that's what's most powerful. This is just an encouragement to myself but also to you guys that use scripture because it is so powerful and it can help you through any temptation, through 
any crazy circumstance, any trial, because God himself used it. That was just a little takeaway from my morning. I'm also reading C.S. Lewis, The Weight of Glory. I enjoy C.S. Lewis's writing and then other stuff just, I feel like completely goes over my head. Maybe I'm just not smart enough to understand it because there's some chapters in here where I was just like eating it up and writing down tons of quotes. And then I'll get to the next chapter and I'm like, I don't even know what I'm reading about. <laughs> I think maybe I'm just dumb. I think that's kind of what I'm gonna chalk it up to. But today I just wanted to take you guys along another day in my life. Thanks for coming back to the channel. I do have a video that I edited it's fully up. I just need to do some description work, add cards, things like that. But it is my Goodwill thrift haul. So that will be up before this video. If you haven't watched it, I'll link it in the cards. I always forget which side the cards are. This side, this side. I get it wrong every time, so I'm gonna go with this side because I feel like this is wrong. Yeah, so it's gonna be a thrift haul. I had some gems at the thrift store, you guys. And for those of you guys that love books and book hauls, there is a pretty good book haul in that video as well. And I've been reading so much this year already. I mean, we're still in January, right? Yes, and I think I've already read five books. That's pretty great for me, especially because my goal is just to read about two books a month. And so the fact that I've already read five books this month, really proud of that. So I'm on pace for reading the most this year than I've ever read, but we're only a month in, so a lot could happen. <laughs> and take y'all back to the office so that I can get a little bit of this work done while he is still napping. One thing, that's a little bit more of a challenge recently. Elliot's been able to reach up on the desk and pull stuff off, like all my plants and stuff, like he can reach them. Now I've had the office door closed while I try and figure out how to childproof this area. I really don't know what I'm gonna do, honestly. I don't know, I might need suggestions, but. So I'm gonna do a little bit of computer work. Like I said, I just have some description work that I need to do and go through and add some cards, I believe. So I definitely have a problem <laughs> with storing my books. I think I need a different setup. I think I need a better setup because it's just like crammed in the corner with a bunch of other stuff around it. It's not organized. It's not easy for me to find books because they're like just stacked upon stacked upon stacked. This is the only bookshelf I own. Yeah, but I think I need to get another one because that's the only one I have or either that or I need to go through and declutter books, but I don't know. I need a better system because this system is just, it's not working for me. It's chaos. And when I want a specific book, it is not easy to find. <laughs> I probably just should look on Facebook Marketplace and get a bookshelf. But this whole room is just, it stresses me out because it's just a catch-all. It's like a bona fide garage, basically. Not my favorite room in the house, let's just say that. I need to put the clothes in the dryer, think about what I'm gonna be making for lunch, because I know that Elliot's gonna wake up and he's gonna be hungry because that boy can eat an elephant every day, I swear. Okay. I'm freezing, my hands are so cold. I had a little bit of French press coffee this morning, but I really want a latte, so I'm gonna make a latte. surprised that Elliot is still napping. This is a long nap for him. Yesterday he had two very short like 30 minute naps. 
I was like, oh no, am I on the cusp of him going down to just one nap during the day? I'm gonna hope that that's not the case because I kind of am loving the routine of having two naps. Here's roughly how the routine goes. The first nap that he takes kind of in the morning, I do my quiet time. And then I'll do maybe like a quick cleanup of the living room. Um, this morning I had some computer work. I'll usually get ready for the day during that time. And then the second nap is dedicated to like chores, tasks, projects. So I'd be really sad if it moved to just one nap a day because then I have to kind of rework everything. Although, if that's the case, I think I would maybe prioritize getting up earlier to have my quiet time. Then, instead of waiting till later in the day to have my quiet time, it's all theories because then you try and set something in motion and then nothing ever really goes the way that you <laughs> planned it in your head. For those of you guys that are looking for peanut butter that doesn't have certain oils in it like palm oil. I did find this one at Aldi. It's organic, which I don't really care that much about, but if you do, organic. But I did find these at Trader Joe's and these were cheaper than Aldi even. If you're looking, they're out there because most peanut butters do have palm oil or some type of oil. So if you're looking to avoid that, there are a couple options out there, but not that many. Big boy! He is refusing his second nap. It's kind of reiterating the fact that I think he wants to go down to one nap and that is just crushing to me. So we'll see how the rest of the day goes because I just feel like he's gonna be tired, but he is not one to go down and I think he's probably been in there for an hour. It's 3.15. Bedtime is usually around 7.30. <laughs> so that's a long time to be awake. I'm just gonna, gonna bring him out. Want nummy? <laughs> You didn't want a nap? Where are you going? Thank you. Is that a wolf? What is a wolf? Ah. What does a wolf say? Ah. Oh. So Nick just got home from work, but the crock pot potato soup that I decided to do looks pretty good. We will have the potato soup tonight for dinner. I don't know if there's gonna be much leftovers, but if there's any leftovers, usually Nick takes it to work the next day. So I'll still have to figure out what to cook tomorrow. I don't wanna go grocery shopping because we're gonna be gone this weekend. So I'm trying to use up the things that are gonna go bad. He refused to second nap. Oh, uh, you called it. You said it was down to one. I know. So he's been up since 11.30 or 12 or something like that. All right, we'll see if that means that he goes down a little bit earlier. Yeah, but then that means he'll wake up earlier. I don't want that. Yeah. This weekend, Nick is gonna be a daredevil racer. Woohoo! Racing, and I'm gonna be basically solo parenting all weekend. So wish me luck, because... <laughs> You're the best. My extra small helmet, documenting the previous damage, don't charge me. Oh yeah. Me and my extra small head, my uncle. And that's who your son Ooh. takes after. He's what do you think of that, buddy? Is daddy gonna be racing? We're gonna be out of town this weekend for him to do this 
racing shindig with his uncle. It's because he's gonna be legitimately racing. I'm gonna be alone with Elliot for the whole weekend, but like not in our home, not in our space. So I'm a little bit nervous, have a little bit of anxiety because I'm really not sure how I'm going to entertain both of us. So we'll see. I think he might like watching the cars for about five minutes and then uh, I'll have to figure out what to do for the rest of the hours of the day. He just keeps saying, oh, daddy's in the car. And then go, boom, boom, boom. Uh-huh, sure. Everything's fitting like a glove. Do one of those, you know, the pose for And then they do the one where they hold the helmet. Oh, my head's probably bigger than yours. Oh, I know. I wore one of these one time and I was like, go terrified. There she is. There's my racer. All right. Claustrophobic. Yeah, I did racing with him go-karts one time and it was terrifying. Just this, not the racing. The racing was fine. It was wearing this because I'm claustrophobic. So wish him luck. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.